Uh, good morning. Good morning. morning. Uh, this is a great conference so far. Yeah, I'm afraid that this one would not disappoint you. <laughs> okay. Since I've been the member of the LDS Church for most of my life, the Utah, visiting Utah is very, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Visiting Utah is kind of a special place for me. This is my third visit to Salt Lake City, but the first for the, the, the Ruby Conference. So this is my pleasure to speak before you. So I'm going to talk about the Ruby 14C41+. And uh, many ask me, that, what the heck the number? <laughs> <laughs> the, this one is from the, the old science fiction book, Ralph 124C41 Plus, A Romance of the Year two, 2660. And uh, this is the very early science fiction book. The, the, the storyline is in the year 2660, a genius inventor, Ralph 124C41 Plus, the, in that age, the, the they, they have the, their first name and the numbers the, this encoded from their birthplace and the bus day or something like that. So the, the, he, this is his name. The law of 141 plus saved his girlfriend kidnapped by a bad merchant. <laughs> Chasing him using his own spacecraft. The, the cheap story though. But Oh, oops. But it's written by Hugo Gansberg, who is very famous for the, the early de days of the science fiction. And he's known as a, one of the fathers of science fiction. And uh, it's written in 1911. So it's, a, it's almost 100 years ago. So. The, it is very cheap story, but it is just, it's just because it's written in very old age. And in, the, in that book, the Hugo is predicted a lot of modern inventions. Remember that in 1911, we don't have any jet plane, uh, rockets, uh, aircraft, uh, or rockets to the star, or tele no television, no, no commercial telephone, no nothing, you know, no, no, no technology. Uh, and in that book, he pre uh, predicted the television and solar power of the aircraft, there was many modern inventions. So in that sense, that was quite incredible. And, uh, and Hugo Gansbach is, the, the famous Hugo Award of the science fiction books is named after his name. Now check Wikipedia. Ruffles and the form plus. So the the title itself is the kind of pun. One, two, four, three, four, one. So the Hugo the knows. Uh, Hugo knew that he, he could pre, uh, foresee the future if, if he can ha, uh, have enough input and insight. So it means if we have enough input and insight, we can foresee the future too, even the future of the Ruby. So that's the name, the Ruby 12441 plus. So in this presentation, we try to foresee the future of the Ruby language. So the most the influential vector of IT industry is Moore's Law, uh, named from Mike Moore here.
not that Moore, though. <laughs> Gordon Moore, who was the, the, the president of the Intel company, he wrote the, the paper in 1964, I guess. And uh, in that paper, he quoted, that he said that this quote, the number of the transistor in the LSI doubles every 24 months. That means the, the news means the power of CPU or computer grows exponentially. So, so now we have the very fast computer, like a PC is not in current days or even faster than supercomputers in 20 years ago. So we, we have very fast computer. And, it, and it's getting cheaper and cheaper. We can buy a laptop PC at the plant store for $400 or $300 or less. And then we have very cheaper connection, like a 50 bucks or less for 100 meg optic fiber connection, at least in Japan. And then, you don't have them? <laughs> And in Japan, most hotels provide the free Wi-Fi connection. <laughs> anyway, we have bigger storage, the bigger RAM, and bigger HD hard drive. And uh, you know, when I start working with a computer, the personal computer, it has, I don't know, 32K RAM and a 320-kilo floppy disk. And think about that. It's it's a <laughs> we have now, we now have four gig memory on the lap, laptop or laptop of even bigger. So it's I don't know millions millions of times bigger than the it used to be the twenty something years ago. But the Moore's law still it still exists. But you know the clock loss is getting saturated like this. So the number of transistors grows exponentially like this, but the, the growth of the clock and the power of the CPU is saturated like this, just because you know, it's, it's too fast. <laughs> and uh, no? <laughs> and uh, it's too hot. And, uh, in, in current days, this, the, the, C, the core, core of this, the CPU the, is hot like a, the flying oven, oven. But maybe in the near future, in, the, in that rate, this rate, the, the temperature of the, the CPU core would be something like the, the, burning, the burning engine. There are several thousand the Celsius, so it it would melt down. So so they had to do something to make it faster. So they try to take they they are going to take uh, the path of many cores in the in the chip. We had the the dual core CPU on a laptop or even quad core, or we are getting the more and more cores in a tip. So you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to surprise when I see the maybe thousand chip that cores in a tip in 10 years. And then we will have even a data center in a chip in the near future. And the computer is getting ubiquitous. And this one is the, the cell phone in Japan uh, from Panasonic company. And uh, actually, this one is my daughter's cell phone, and it has everything. You know, you, of course, you can call and texting, and uh, you know, internet access. It has browsers, and it has music player in it. And, uh, you can pay pay tickets or something and from by this the this phone in the, with building some kind of the IC payment or something like that and uh, it has even JVM on it. 
or TV receiver, digital TV receiver in it. <laughs> she, she, she watched TV programs via her cell phone. So, and it is a, it is a computer. It, so, so we, ha we, computers are very ubiquitous. Everyone has computers. Even, everyone has many computers r these days. So, in summary, how do trends in IT field is faster, cheaper, more ubiquitous, and more cores. And, uh, and uh, hardware changes because cause software changes. In the software, the runtime efficiency is, is, becomes less important just because the computers are very fast these days. So probably the 30 years ago, the language like Ruby is nothing. You know, it's too slow. But these days, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Some cares, of course. <laughs> I do. But most of them, the Ruby is fast enough for most of the case. And uh, we don't see the assembly of the lately, so we don't need them. So, and uh, software becomes more important in, in many fields. Like, I, f I flew from Japan, but with the computers, no jet plane flies, no reservation system runs, no, no airport business. And, uh, we need software. We need computers. Computers need software. So if we, if we want to start anything in business, we need to write any, some software. So software becomes more and more important. At the same time, the, the software becomes more complex. The even, even more, so the, I think the software is the most complex existence in the, the history of mankind, the even, even more complex than any buildings or any machines or anything. It's very complex and very tightly uh, coupled with part of part. So we just need more software in more, uh, in shorter time. So we need, so we need productivity. So that, that allows us the abstraction like object-oriented programming or functional programming. So this, this abstraction makes, does not make impossible possible. Like if one can implement something in object-oriented programming, so the other can implement in any procedure way the same software. But with using this the paradigm, so we can make uh, software faster or more convenient. So the it's the the faster computer allows us to use this paradigm to make us uh, more productive. So. In summary, runtime efficiency is less important, and we can emphasize human factor of the programming. So, so we can uh, consume the power of the, the CP com computer to make us happy or make programmers happy. So, and then we, more abstractions and more comfortable tools are allowed now just because the, the we have more power than the previous days. And uh, we, now we have the information explosion. And uh, from some paper, we will produce the 988 exabyte in the year 2010. Exabytes. It's uh, 988 exabytes is nearly uh, one yottabyte, <laughs> which is the, the Milli million, oh, million tele, uh, meg, gig, 
tell, peter, x, yota. So it's the billionth, <laughs> billionth terabyte. Billion terabyte. We produce billion terabyte data in a year. So it's bigger data than humankind have ever produced in a year. So we have faster machines and we have cheaper connection and we need more software and we have huge amount of data. So, okay, these are the, the, our starting point and background to predict the future. So let us talk a little bit about the past. So back in 1993, I have the Motorola uh, 68000 machine and a 200 megahertz, megahertz and a 200 meg hard drive and a B, um, BSD Unix. Th this is the machine I started working on, Ruby. Uh, in the year 1993, we worked mostly on C or some C++. At the time, the, the dominant OS was the Windows 3.1 was Sun OS and the Mac OS. Uh, pre prior to OS X, the, most of them working in C or Pro 4, Pro 5 is not there yet. And uh, we work on OAK, and uh, no one used object in the programming and scripting field. So if, you, if someone wants to program in an object-oriented way, so they have to go to the C++ or Smalltalk. So, there, there's, there was no, there was no Java yet in '93, and uh, oh, there was Object Objective C there, but it's it's virtually unknown for most of them, most of us. So, at the year, uh, I was an uh, object oriented programming fanboy at the, at the time. See, yeah, actually, yeah, I was obviously a farm boy and a language geek since I was high school boy. So it has been, I don't know, 30 years or something. And uh, I was a Unix hacker then. So I was thinking about uh, the object or the scripting. The, I, I, knew, I knew Perl, and it was good too. It was convenient too. But as a language geek, it, as a language, as a programming language, it is, uh, yeah, I can say it, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I think I could improve the language. You know, I, I, there, there's possibilities for better language in that field. And it, as an old fanboy, that's la I thought that language should have been uh, object-oriented programming language. But everyone told me it would be too slow or too complex or object-oriented programming is just too much for scripting. But, but no one stopped me. <laughs> uh, the project, the, 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 I, I started working on Ruby on February 24th, 1993, that it, which, it, which day I choose the name Ruby. I just named Ruby just because it's beautiful. <laughs> you know, I I respect Pearl and Lally Wall who invented Pearl, and uh, I wanted to choose the name from Joel, the the precious stone. So, but I can do diamonds, fire, and these names are too long. But Ruby is short and beautiful. So. So I took the name, and afterwards I found out the, the pearl, the the jewel pearl is uh, the birthstone of the month of June, and the ruby is the birthstone for month of July. So it's a great name for the language came after pearl, <laughs> but it's afterthought. And the one thing I regret is the Googleability. So. In the early, early days of Ruby, so we we had trouble the googling the the language. You know, the Ruby, the cheap Ruby, or a great Ruby from Thailand, or something like that. <laughs> and, and 
Yeah, the we we have this kind of the problem all the time, but remember in '93 we don't have Google yet, <laughs> and I don't know there was a, any search engine there. Maybe Alto Vista from digital equipment, and uh, yeah. And, by the way, the Google, uh, for according about Google Verity, the Google had a problem. Like, a, you remember the language named Go? Yeah, which is I think which is great, great as a language, but you know, this is the worst for the Google ability. You know, Go. <laughs> How can Google it? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's irony to to we have problem to Google, to Google a Google product. <laughs> anyway, so it took me six months for simple Hello World, just because you know to print Hello World we have to implement. I I had to implement the string object. To implement string object, I have to implement the object as a super class of the string class. To implement object class, I have to implement uh, the class system. And uh, to implement the class system, I have to implement uh, the method invocation system or something like that. So it's kind of like a chain of the, the implementations. So, so it took me six months. So can you imagine how i glad <laughs> to see mere hello world printed on my console <laughs> after six months of good effort. <laughs> but soon after I implemented the hello world, that made me realize that we need GC. <laughs> so it, it soon it clashed, you know, no memory. We, ha we allocated too much objects. So I tried to implement the GC, then the other things, arrays, IOs or something like that. It is a continuous uh, effort until the, we have something usable. And I released publicly uh, version 0 0.95 on December 21st, 1995. So in a sense, this day is the birthday of Ruby since 1995. The interesting thing is that, that for Java, it, it was started in 1993 and released on 95. So the Ruby is exactly the same age as Java. So, so Ruby language, at the first, I didn't expect uh, the Ruby becomes this big, you know, this big. <laughs> <laughs> but Ruby has proven that the objects are in programming for scripting or teeny, teeny tasks like uh, the, the, the scripting, text processing, the web, web programming, or something, is very useful. And the uh, object learning programming can be simple and easy, like, like the daily scripting. And, uh, and the most importantly, the programming can be fun again. I, was, I started my programming, uh, programming uh, from the language basic. The, the language was crap, <laughs> <laughs> at that time at least. But it was fun. But the, the, the days after, when I became the professional programmer, the, the programming is no longer fun just because you know, I have to make money on it. But you know, after Ruby, I and many others agreed with, with me, and uh, Ruby made my programming fun again. So it's very important. So the, some say the Ruby as an agile language. I, mean, I don't know about uh, how agile Ruby is, but I very uh, agree with the, the attitude of the extreme in programming. So if uh, code review is good, so make everything code review by pair programming. Or if test is good, always test 
like t even test first as a test driven uh, development. So, at the same, from the same attitude, if object oriented programming is good, make everything object. If scripting is good, make everything scripting. If DSL is good, make everything DSL. This, that's what Ruby did. Like, uh, you know, the, by using Ruby, every task, like making a website, uh, is kind of like a scripting. Very cheap task. Or the C Rails, it's, it's very complex and magical, but it makes our web programming is like a DSL. Uh, Rails is a, D is a DSL for web programming. So we have a lot of other DSLs. So Ruby makes the programming is kind of like a designing DSL for the task. So if higher order function is good, allow every method to be higher order function by allowing them to accept blocks. Uh, if mixing, it, which, which used to be a, a, a usage of the multiple inheritance, but this whole, uh, if, mi if mixing is good, we disallow multiple inheritance at all and allow only a mixing by using module. So, this, I tend to take the extreme design choice in designing the language, Ruby. So, here's a mid-time summary. As a forecasting background, and machines are faster, cheaper, and ubiquitous. We have more cores, even bigger than previous, and connections are very cheap. And we need more software, and the products become more and more important. And we, ha we have huge amount of data, uh, 988 exabytes this year. And the Ruby focus on programmers, not the users, not the computers. We, we focus on programmers, developers. And we focus on the productivity of the programmers. And uh, Ruby tend to choose the extreme design choice. The future, what do you think from these backgrounds? What do you think? I expect Ruby, future Ruby to be faster by, by allowing multiple VM in the process so that we can the maximum utilize the, the multi-core we have, or we can have the GC improvement. So Ruby's GC is written by me and very uh, optimized for the scripting, very small task, and so it requires the, what? <laughs> uh, I don't remember the word. <laughs> the performance of in, the, in a scripting program. But these days, like, uh, like Ruby is used for every area, like uh, writing demons, like a long life process. The current DC is not good at these long life, long life huge object allocating programs. So we can, we have, we see rooms of improvement of that area, so we can work on that. So, like for example, the Ruby Enterprise Edition did some some work in, that improved the Ruby garbage collector in certain situation. But I, the the reason I didn't merge it into the core uh, the the standard light, standard distribution is just because you know it slows down other cases. So we have to work on it more seriously. And uh, Ruby can be make it fa Ruby can be made faster by using Zit, just in time compiler, and uh, we we are vaguely planning to work on it. So, the future of, I expect the future of Ruby to be more powerful through distributed programming, like DRuby or Rinder or some kind of message queues, so that we can even utilize more cores or the more process, more computers at the same time. 
we can provide uh, the fast IPC, like uh, the message pack library uh, written by my uh, some my Japanese friends, and uh, it would be more multi-core aware. So the I expect the future of Ruby to be broader applications, like us in a small field. We can may, we may be able to use the the Ruby in embedding field or or high performance computing field. Uh, in embedding field, the you know the the r computers in the, some appliance or the small computers are small machines, small gadgets are getting the powerful more powerful each days. So I saw a the digital uh, DVD recorder, the very prototype of the very intelligent DVD recorder from Toshiba company, and which, which runs on cell processor, and uh, it, its menu systems was run, on, run by Ruby. So it was j just a prototype and not, not commercialized, but at least the, the people behind the, the appliance company to thinking about making Ruby or other higher level language into these kind of the, the the intelligent appliances. Yeah, we expect the, the alternative implementation for the smaller computers like a cell phone and, a, and teeny, teeny controllers, but not planned yet, but I expect some, uh, to see someday. And uh, the, the student in the, the University of Tokyo is working on a project named Atomic Ruby which is to make the our Ruby more pluggable, like a pluggable garbage collectors, pluggable string handling. So in, in smaller computers, we don't need any Unicode, any, any legacy encoding. We just need ASCII. So, so in Atomic, Atomic Ruby project, they try to make these uh, features pluggable so they can remove it remove these features if if we the the smaller computer doesn't need it so in the high, high performance of computing field like we thinking about improving nra with libjet so the jetting the the processing can make nra even faster or the missing uh, mpi is this this is very famous in the hpc field so we, pro we can provide uh, MPI Ruby or ahead of time comp compiler. So compile Ruby into machine code. So it's slower than the, f the C++ say, but you can remove some burdens from the runtime system by ahead of time compiler. Or we, the, the, uh, a professor in a uh, University of Tokyo is working on the project for Ruby for HPC. And uh, the future of Ruby would be more modular. For example, selector namespace or class box or traits. The selector namespace, some may know or some may not. So it is the limit effectiveness of the name overriding. So the, we, we currently have the, the library named MathN, which replaces the, the definition of some mathematical operation so, so that the one divided by, by two becomes the rational one, the one half. So, but it replaces, since it replaces the, the method or operator, so it's, its influence is very huge. Its impact is very huge. Huge. So it may broke other libraries. So if once we introduce a selector namespace in Ruby, so you can limit the, the effectiveness of the, this kind of the overriding or method replacement into the the certain scope, so that you can you don't have to worry about the 
about breaking other systems or libraries. So we are planning that in to, for the Ruby 2.0, but the only problem is it is quite easy to implement it, but it is quite difficult to make it efficient. So once I, if I implement the select namespace in very na naive way, it slows down Ruby by factor of five or something. So <laughs> we have to do something before making it, 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 it true. Uh, trait is the operational combination of the features or methods. So like uh, the module A plus B becomes a new, new module or something like that. So by adding module, so it, it is checked, the, the name conflict would be checked so that the, we can n n tell the, the name class beforehand. So trace is, trace is much easier. So we, I will implement a trace soon after I started the Ruby 2.0 work. And the future of Ruby would be more functional uh, by explicit lazy graduation or an emulator as a lazy list. Uh, the functional Ruby would be explicit uh, comparing to the, the pure functional language like Haskell. Like uh, for to, um, to retrieve a method in a language like Haskell or even Python, you can only do the object dot foo, to, but we need the object dot method by name foo. It's, it's tedious, but but you know, in the da daily scripting or daily programming, it is quite few to to remove the method. So I I tend to choose the object dot foo as a, the invocation of the method with a parentheses. And, and uh, in uh, some language, like a foo parentheses calls the, the function uh, assigned to the variable foo, but we have to call the foo.call explicitly, or foo square brackets, or in 19.9, foo dot parentheses. These are all the same. And uh, it's more ex explicit than uh, this, this, like uh, the Python way or the Haskell way, but it, it makes us very easy for, the, for daily scripting. Now, and we have to do more explicit, like the above one, take 10 lines f, this is the, the Haskell way, and this is Ruby way, f dot each dot take 10. But uh, if I called f dot lines, we took the, everything into the, the single array, array so the, it reads the whole file, but these are lazy way so that you, that by this and this, it reads only ten lines from a file head of head of the a file. Uh, and in Ruby, map uh, method like map do not work for the infinite enumerable just because the map creates the the array as a result. But I'm I'm vaguely planning about the something of oh, something like a map X or the. The name is not decided yet, but some other version of map that would return enumerator to, to implement the lazy list. Just because, you know, we have two, so that we, we have two versions of the map function, which is eagerly uh, evaluate the, the list or the lazily evaluate the list. Just because, you know, the lazy one is much slower than the eager one. And so we, when we don't have to work on the, the infinite list, we don't have to use any the lazy version. Well, in summary, the future of Ruby, we, it would be the faster, more far, powerful, and broader, and more modular, and more functional. 
And uh, we will keep moving forward. We are not fast to, to progress, I, can't, I admit, but we keep moving forward. We, we, we are not going to stop and, uh, and stay tuned to see the very bright future of Ruby language and, uh, and help us to make Ruby better, even better. And uh, let's make, and, uh, and uh, if you want to help us, we have a lot of things to do, the improving documentation, the, the exchanging ideas and opinions, and uh, even make an make a enhancement or debug. Well, we have a lot of things to do. So see you at the, the Ruby core mailing list if you want to, to help us. Then I'm gonna make the world better. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm very proud I can influence the world, like influencing other the language, other software, and influence so many people. And uh, in that way, we will rule the world. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>